The little webcam sits on top of Big Papa camera. Don't let me fall! I hear it two young queens in a fight. Where's blue? We don't need blue. Clawing out your eyes, going end. Feel it. Just end. That month has got me through so many bad days. You're asking me to take off my gloves in the midst of a hundred thousand bees. Hi, I'm Sarah Blue. Remember all the good times we had? Why? Okay. A little higher. Give them a reason to sting you. I don't even like Fresca. Things change. Idea Wars, where ideas submitted to Cambrian House compete for fame, groupies, and a schwack of Cambros. Who decides the winner? You do. Who submits the ideas? You do. Winners are automatically entered into the Idea Wars Tournament of Champions. If your idea cannot be implemented legally in North America, Amsterdam, Sweden, or Zealand, then talk to the hand. Welcome to this week's Idea Wars. Why don't we start off by talking about Sarah Blue's favorite idea this week. Bob? All right. What are your opinions? I don't know what Sarah Blue's favorite idea is this week. What good are you, Bob? Thanks for joining us on yet another exciting episode of Idea Wars. Sarah Blue is indisposed this week, but I have Danger, who works on the Gwabs team. Gwabs team. We'll start off by showing some interview footage I shot with Scooby. Scooby was the winner this week with Beekware. I'm on Gwabs team. Basically, I'm a fairly new beekeeper. I realized how important it was to be able to maintain information on my hives. I went looking for software that did that. There were several things that just met the bare minimum requirements of what I wanted it to do, and we really need some sort of hive hive management tracking software that would benefit all the beekeepers. Well, I follow Will Pate. Oh. He was talking to you guys about what you did, and I thought, that's perfect. I have to at least post this idea and see if it gets any response. You did upload a spreadsheet that you've been developing for yourself right now. A lot of people in the beekeeping community are basically using pencils and spiral notebooks, which is the way I started. Spreadsheets are great. I can't take anything away from them. The issue there is most of us can make some very basic things that track the hive. But in my mind, I imagined something that was much more encompassing. My queen is getting older. If I decide to let the hive raise a queen, I know that in about 10 days, I should see something called a queen cell. Bigger than the honeycomb, it sticks out farther. That's because she's so big. They're raising a queen in there. On about day 16, she should come out. After that, she should be, you know, taking her mating flight. There are certain landmarks that we're looking for in the age of a queen from when she's first born. So if I'm tracking all this, I can look up at the date and say, this is the date she ought to be coming out. That would be very insightful. We really need every edge that we can possibly get in order to keep uh, our bees thriving. I thought if we could form some software that would foster a community, that we would be able to, in essence, not only help our own hives, but help each other. Are you talking about sharing data? That's just one of the aspects that we're talking about. I've been overwhelmed with the comments. We've got people talking about barcoding in the field and taking uh, handhelds out with them and syncing up information online. And my big focus right now is just to get a framework that will take care of those few basic needs first. And then maybe the community can let us know what they would like to have us build for them. So can we simply build an online web app that tracks all that? So far, the guys that have hives would like to see this be an offline app. I kind of started out that way myself when I first started this process, but thanks to the crowd, and this is really an up for crowdsourcing, it became very clear that there was a, another side to this story and what the potential was for having this be developed online. Obviously, first thing you come up with is the distribution. The ease of distribution? Changes an entire structure of, of a company. The beekeepers want to make sure that their information is safe and always there. The idea behind uh, having it all online is ease of use, uh, ease of distribution, and the ability to really grow it. Easy upgrades, and you're also going to grow a community, hopefully. The online guys are the easiest to service and possibly the easiest to collect payment from, too. I don't think there was ever any real consideration for packaging up CDs and shipping them out. When we say offline, it's downloadable execution file. The other thing I've heard about was I want it to be a client-side app because I want to put it on my laptop and take my laptop out to the bee yard, enter information as I go. The one thing that's interesting about beekeepers and the one reason that it's been so difficult to design uh, this kind of hive management software is that we all have our own way of doing things, and it's been hard to organize it all. Everybody's situation is a little bit different. I've got four different hives. The three hives that you see, the first three are regular hives. The small one over here is called a nucleus hive. I'm trying to build a hive of bees out of just a very small group of bees. You definitely need to be able to track each one of these hives individually. 
each one of them has their own characteristics as well, and I need to be able to account for all of those things. I guess I'm not uh, entirely clear on how gross it is there oh, with the beehive. Basically, with four hives, if I need to make a couple notes, I will. But usually I don't. I come back, clean up, sit down, and start writing everything I learned. Even for me, with just a few hives, I can see that I'm going to need to record something in the field. It's a frame full of capped honey. You can see down lower here, this is uncapped honey. This is definitely something I want to record. How much is on here? How many frames in the 10-frame box have honey on them? They've just started to cap this side over here. Definitely some of the information I want to be able to track. I would be able to take a laptop out there. I'd be a little leery about it, but I'm sure that there's people that are set up to do that a little bit better than I am. You know, you can't do it with your gloves on. Your gloves are completely covered with all sorts of things that bees make. If you were able just to get away, take off your gloves, type in the relevant information, go on to the next hive, that would be great. It would really be fairly easy to do, I believe. Is all the information then that you're collecting, could it be captured with a camera? Frame hangers slip on the side of the hive. I pull the frame out, hung a frame on frame hangers. I can let go of it and take a picture of it. And I was able to zoom in on each bee and look at it because I'm looking for pests. I'm looking for something called varroa mites. I think there would be a tremendous advantage to having the ability to go out and snap a picture and load that in. You couldn't make that your whole data collection procedure, right? Take a photo of the hive number, snap, snap, snap your detailed photos, and then basically all your data entry is offloaded to coming back and analyzing the camera photos? Let's say I've got a hive that has two boxes, and that is to say that the bottom box is the brood box where all the baby bees are. A box on top of that is for stores where they put honey. Each one of these boxes has 10 frames, and each one of these frames has two sides. Now you're talking 40 pictures to get a really good look at it. You take the frame out and you can visually inspect it pretty quick, but if I was trying to take the workflow and pipe it through a camera, you have to take the, every frame out and you have to put it in a frame hanger and take a photo. It's crazy tedious compared to just visually inspecting. We want to look into the hive, gather our information, and get the hive closed back up again as soon as we can. Our queen is precious, and she is exposed when you have it open. A breeze could come through and blow her away, and, and then I'm just in, in, in all kinds of trouble. And you're asking me to take off my gloves in the midst of 100,000 bees that I've just broken into their hive. And <laughs> yeah, I'm not overly crazy about that, to be honest with you. What's the size of the market that you could be selling or leasing the software to? Kim Flottam, who's the editor of Bee Culture magazine, he told me there's just about 90,000 beekeepers in the United States. Of those 90,000, 85,000 are considered hobbyist beekeepers. Another form called sideliners. This is somebody with a bigger operation that is producing a specific product that next their goal every year. And then you've got the last thousand or so, which are commercial beekeepers. They service the industry, basically. The hobbyists are the biggest part of the market. I believe that to be case. Beekeepers have been around for ages. Computers have been around for ages. How can there be a market demand? It's called uh, CCD or colony collapse disorder. You basically go out and find your bees are gone. They've left the, the capped brood there. This is not something bees do. In the last two years, it's taken a, a, a steep dive. They don't understand what's causing CCD. It is under a tremendous amount of investigation right now. There have been a lot of things thrown around, pesticides and spraying of crops and GM crops. Somebody has even decided that maybe it's cell phones, although I think that's been pretty much ruled out. There are a lot of reasons that have been given. None of them have been proved at this point. This is really going to have a large effect on us. Look at things like the almond crop in California. It depends greatly on the pollination uh, provided by the honeybees. People truck in honeybees for miles and miles just to pollinate these crops. That used to be a $5 billion industry that is now down to a $1.5 billion industry. The media seems to be picking this up. You've got companies like haagen who are putting together websites just to inform people about the need for uh, saving the honeybees. This is bringing in some more beekeepers. These beekeepers are different in the sense that we're much more connected, more automated, and we're looking for something besides spiral notebooks and pencils to put our notes down in. I'm that case scenario, exactly. When I went looking for it, it, it didn't exist in the fashion that I thought it would. It's the history of the idea, basically, but... Really, CCD is bringing new beekeepers into the market. I think this would be a great thing to provide to those folks.
Is it just me, or was that B-movie with Jerry Seinfeld absolute crap? Did you actually <laughs> sit through that? I got a 7 and 11 year old, of course I sat through it. By the end, weren't you like clawing out your eyes, going end, just end? It was not factual. All the foragers that went out were all big, beefy boys. We know that to be the women, and we know the boys, you know, hang around and drink beer and eat honey, and, and that's about it. How many times have you been stung? I've only been stung just a couple of times. As soon as they sting you, a honeybee dies, and they don't want to die. Is it true that every time you get stung your body builds up immune system until like the seventh time you get stung and you just die not the seventh time and you die part a lot of people who have allergies if you eat honey from your local area, you know, where that nectar is gathered from those flowers, and it's those flowers or those plants that's causing your allergies, and you're eating honey that's gathered from those, then you're going to build up a tolerance to your allergies. It'll actually help your allergies quite a bit. What do you think the next step in this project is? Trying to figure out what the software needs to do, determine a platform, or are you concerned about funding? Like, is it a business concern or is it a software concern? First of all, let me say thanks for what the crowd has done in terms of the comments and voting for this. I really do appreciate that. And it is very unexpected, very excited about it. We're going to solve our issue of online, offline. After that, I'm going to need some real help putting this together. The insight of somebody that knows how to write a design doc, you know, what's feasible and functional. Definitely need a programmer. I would really like to get moving on this as quick as we can. I have a lot of support. I've heard a lot of people not only from the crowd, but from the beekeeping community as well, that they want to see this. I hope to be able to put something together for them. Thanks a lot for joining, and congratulations on winning. Very interesting, too. I know I've learned a lot about bees. Cool. Thank you, Gord. I appreciate your time. So, what did you think of that, Danger? It's good. Since Blue's not here, Danger, I'm going to have to have you cover for her with her favorite idea, yeah. which was Jim Rating Site. So, I will let you tell us why you like that idea. Uh, for people looking for a gym and who are tired of getting screwed, the gym rating system is a website that allows people to get an inside look at their options. Unlike visiting a gym, our product provides information from actual members. Sarah Blue did point out that getting screwed was probably why people look for a gym in the first place. And then she laughed when she said it. Yeah, good point. It was a punchline to a joke, in fact. <laughs> I did want to mention that the Internet FM by Christian, I think that'll really start to get interesting once Christian allows you to upload playlists. You used to do Cameron House videos all the time. Remember all the good times we had? Yeah. Danger? Now... Things change. Now it's almost like... Cambrian House and Guabs are competing for resources. Some people were like, oh, it's not a zero-sum game. It sure feels zero-sum danger. When I go into the fridge and I'm looking for a red rain and there is no red rain and I found out it was drank and it wasn't drank by Cambrian House, it was drank by someone in the Guabs team, I'd call that pretty zero-sum. The Cambrian House flawless scoring idea of the week. Virtual date by Yuri. The idea, constructing a virtual site where one can bring his or her virtual date in and have fun together. This site needs to supply activities that bounds two people together. Emphasize the power of two. What are your thoughts on that? Doesn't sound so bad. What's the first thing that springs to mind? Gloves? No. You think second life, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. For sure. So is Gwabs going to be good for dating? Could. Really? Well. But it's always competitive, right? Yeah, so is dating. We're both married. It's true. But not together. No. <laughs> so we don't need dating sites, so maybe we're not in the know for that. Thanks for joining us on this week's Idea Wars. We'll be back next week with Sarah Blue, although we have certainly enjoyed our time here with Danger. And uh, don't forget to vote. Put your useful comments in under those ideas, and if you see any interesting collaboration tools, uh, post them in our forums, because uh, I'm trying to round up tools that people might use to help collaborate. And until next week, may the, may the best, best idea, idea win. win! You didn't sound like Sarah Blue, you didn't look like Sarah Blue, and you weren't drinking Fresca. People are going to know. The social structure of a hive is simply fascinating, and basically the queen controls the whole thing. Almost all of the bees in the hive are female. They are the nurse bees, uh, they're the worker bees, they're the foragers, they clean the hive, they do absolutely everything. Uh, there are a few male bees in the hive, they're called drones, and the drones have two jobs, and that is to eat honey and mate the queen.
I suppose that's not a bad deal to have until you figure out that when the weather starts to get cool, all the female bees in the hive have one job. That's to round up all the boy bees and kick their butts out the front door for the winter. They're the first to die. They're the first to go. That sounds a little crappier than you'd led me on.